So today, we're gonna do a bit of a walk around and I'm gonna kind of explain how I built this here cannon. We're a little covered in mud today because the next video is gonna be quite exciting. Next week is very fun. <coughs> What's in the box? That's next week's video. That's all you're gonna see so far. Why is that not shutting? There we go. Okay. So, to start with, from the very beginning, like 10 years ago, I built this cannon, just the gun itself. It didn't have this on it, and it didn't have the muzzle brake on it. It was just this, and it was actually blue. You can kind of see under there, that's the color of blue that the gun was originally when I built it just out of high school. And uh, this is the same sparker that's been on there the entire time. So that's pretty cool. It hasn't had to be replaced. I am going to replace it because I have a video coming up where I'm gonna upgrade this cannon and uh, I'm gonna flip this upside down so that these screws are hidden inside of a new saddle. I'm gonna replace this saddle here so that it's a little bigger and there's more room to work with. But I'm gonna hide the screws down inside of the saddle and I'm gonna hide this sparker, well, the new sparker, down inside of the saddle as well. And I'm gonna put a rod that goes in and pushes on the sparker like this, but the rod will be attached to a tr trigger system that you can squeeze with your hand back here and be able to feel like you're pulling a trigger instead of just pushing this little button. And it'll be really cool. Anyway, built a cannon 10 years ago and I've had a dream of putting it on its own trailer system. And I didn't know how to weld at the time, but my grandpa showed me how to weld and I decided I wanted to try and tackle the trailer that I wanted to build. So I found some scrap metal. This is actually an oxygen settling cart. This is the bottom of it. And the handles were right here, but they were all mangled and broken. So I cut them off and uh, pulled this thing out of the garbage so that I could use it as a trailer. These arms actually came off of that potato harvester all the way over there. I cut them off with a battery powered grinder and uh, this is completely seized. They've been swelled. There's been water in there. They're actually cracked and there's no way they'd ever turn again. So they're set at the length that they are, but they're just perfect for what I use. I welded the ears that were actually on the harvester. These were the ones that were on the harvester. I just cleaned them up real good. And these ones were also part of that, but I took it and uh, welded them onto a new tongue so that I could mount this with a uh, separating separating tongue so you could have legs. You got mud on the letter there. Yeah. Tina. She's actually a 50, or I mean, sorry, a 50 millimeter 10 bore cannon. 50 millimeter, meaning that the barrel down inside of there is a 50 millimeter barrel. And you can see how the muzzle brake is actually enlarged well over the barrel. I spent a lot of time carving this out so that I wouldn't get a baffle strike. And we do get mild baffle striking occasionally, but it's not a big problem. It's nothing to worry about. So I'm gonna leave it. But ooh, that was melted sugar in there. <laughs> it's kind of gross. This ammo box I bought. I got that from a hardware store. This one, my grandpa brought home from the military. So it's actually from Vietnam, but I've made a mess of it. I'll be cleaning it up, don't worry. And uh, the axle system, funnily enough, is just the front axle off of an old lawnmower. And I built these mounts here and just bolted it to a couple of rods that I welded down inside of there. Well, a rod onto the axle that was originally there. But I bolted it onto there so that it would be removable if I wanted to change it. But I think it's fine and I'm not gonna change it. It stays fine, it's stable, so I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna weld it, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. It works good. I welded these pieces of metal onto the steering system so that it would be straight and stable. This elevation system, funnily enough, is a head gate opening system, like for a water irrigation system. And I welded this T onto here so that I could put a little tube, well, it's actually just a solid rod. It goes into a square tube that I've got underneath the cannon and it's loose so that it can bounce a little bit and have a little bit of give when we're going down the road. But it works. 
works really good. You can see the square tubing is just a little bit of box tube, but the rod goes in there and pushes up from a decent distance. You can see where it pushes on very obviously. But it also gives you just a little bit of wiggle room when you want to aim a little bit too. Side to side, up and down, just a little bit of wiggle room. It's mounted on from these ears here. And I welded a pipe through this. This was very difficult. I had to have a couple sets of hands to hold all this here while I welded it together. But it works. Ugly welds, but hey, it works. These kind of look like rivets from a distance. So I like the way they look, it's all right. These are a little bit better, but yeah, I'm no professional welder, but it works. Good enough. Looks good enough from a distance. These welds I did, that, that one was probably one of my best ones. But, and the ammo boxes are just kind of strap, strap metal screwed to a piece of wood that's been strap metal screwed to the carriage. Both of them. They work all right. This one fell once, but uh, I reinforced it and made it so that it wouldn't. Hopefully it'll stay anyway. One of these days, I'm gonna go through the mountains with it, take it up into the hills and shoot it through the canyon. So I hope it doesn't fall off again. The stand actually comes off pretty easy. Just gotta pull this pin. It drops that pin. You can pick it up and there's pressure hanging, I gotta put the camera out. Okay. So take the pressure off. Then this can fold back. Those can open. And then you've got a good stance. And they will dig into the ground a little bit. It has just a little bit of recoil. But I mean potato cannon, obviously not much. But surprisingly, enough to make it move a little bit in soft ground like that. It'll dig a little. Looks good when it's full stanced out though. Ready for battle. <laughs> it also can have a very high angle too. Just a second. Let me move this out a little bit. It actually has a very steep shooting angle and can shoot really far away. Golf balls happen to be the, per the perfect weight. They're right roughly around 700 grains. Being a 10 bore, 700 grains is a tenth of a pound. 7,000 grains is one pound. This shoots 700 grain projectiles, preferably. They vary a little. I can shoot stuff that weighs over a thousand grains, but it's a little sketchy. Golf balls are perfect though, because they're aerodynamic and they're made to fly, of course. So, I mean, I've shot plenty of golf balls out of this and when I shoot it far, I've never found one. I have no idea how far it'll shoot. No idea. I'd love to go to a driving range and see, but I don't have a good one around where I live. And I've, I live in hills, so, and long grass, so it's hard to find stuff when I shoot it. This is obviously fall and the grass is pretty short and dead, so it's perfect to find stuff. But out there where those cows are, it's still long grass out there. And I'm not gonna find anything that gets lost out there. Same with up behind my property. I'm not gonna find it if it lands up there. I make my own ammo for it anymore. Golf balls, kind of hard to come across where I live. So I make my own out of garbage from work, wood stuff. It's all painted red, it's made out of wood that is originally just gonna be thrown away. So no harm, no foul. This one holds my spray for fuel. And I use a knockoff brand of the spray deodorant. You can pretty well tell what it is. It's cheap, it's a bucket can. Oh. 
I can get quite a few shots out of one can. So it's the perfect fuel. It's clean. It burns clean. It doesn't leave a sticky residue in the cannon. So it's reliable. And I'm just going to keep using it. I don't want to use oxygen acetylene or propane or anything like that because it burns too rapidly. And this is just PVC. So I don't want to take a chance of blowing it up. I'd like to keep making videos with it. This here, I have a safety system kind of where this is actually weaker glue holding the barrel in so that if I have a squib and the projectile gets lodged and it gets over pressure, the barrel theoretically will actually launch out of the cannon rather than the cannon blowing up. So hopefully we never have to test that, but I thought ahead or I tried to. <laughs> the next video is gonna be very fun. I got some very complicated looking darts. That's what you just saw in there after shooting, so. It was a fun day. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to see more exciting stuff about this cannon, please check out my other videos. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. We'll see you next time.